All right, just wanted to do a video really showing how true Bible-believing Christians, how, what our attitude should be towards Roman Catholicism. This is a film called Martin Luther, it made in 2003 by, it was, it, by an independent film company. Now, I want to point out, first of all, that Martin Luther, he was not a saved person. He did have a lot of, he was non-dispensational. Uh, you, you can read about how he, he wanted to use the book of James to like light fires and stuff, because he was non-dispensational and that kind of stuff. Because uh, the Catholics will use the Book of James to prove their works out, their false gospel work salvation, they uh, he he didn't believe in eternal security, so there's problems there. But his attitude towards Roman Catholicism was the biblical attitude, you know, saying that the Pope is not above Scripture and that the gospel should not be denied for the words of the Church. You're going to see that in this film. Uh, the first timestamp is 50 minutes in. I'm just going to start right there. And you're going to see that he has like what's called what I like to call the biblical attitude towards Roman Catholicism, saying that what they say does not overthrow Scripture. Because Catholics, they believe they have they have Scripture, divine Scripture, but they also have holy traditions and the Church decrees and the Pope, you know, papal bulls and stuff. They're putting the words of men above the words of God, and you know Martin Luther saw that and rejected it. My son, I know you desire to be a faithful servant of Christ and his church. I am here to help you. Stand on your feet, my son. What do you have to say? Have I heard? Yes, you have heard. Huh. That I may avoid such error again. You have erred by teaching new doctrines. Which of my teachings is offensive to Rome? For one, indulgences. Pope Clement's decree, Unigenitus, clearly states that the merits of Christ are a treasure of indulgences. Acquired. I'm sorry, Your Grace. I think you'll find it says the merits of Christ acquired a treasure of indulgences. Now I want to point out right there, he says the Pope's decree, because in Roman Catholicism they believe the words of the Pope are in many ways higher than Scripture. You know, official Catholic teaching says, I mean, uh, Brian pointed this out, official Catholic teaching, he showed show the proof too, official Catholic teaching is that if the church, if the church, the Pope says one thing and the Scriptures, scriptures say another, you go with what the Pope says regardless of what the Scriptures say. They're putting the words of men above the words of God. But, you know, what do you expect from Roman Catholics? I am not here to wrangle with you. No, Your Grace. But Unigenitus was issued 175 years ago. And were this decree not so embarrassing to our church, perhaps it would not be commonly called extravagante. And left out of most collections of canon law. It contradicts Panomitanus. Our present Pope Leo is in harmony with Clement's decree. And there ends the matter. The honor of the papacy is not preserved by the naked assertion of papal authority, but by safeguarding the Pope's credibility and the clear testimonies of divine scripture. The Pope interprets scripture. He may interpret it, but he is not above it. Amen to that. The Pope is not above the words of God. The Pope, and I've said this, you know, uh, in, in other videos, the Pope is nothing more than just a usurper of Christ's authority. That's all he is. I mean, if the Roman Catholic Church was a, was a biblical church, which it's not, but given it was a biblical setting, the Pope would be a usurper. He, he'd, he'd be what the Bible says, having preeminence, and, you know, diatrophies having preeminence over the assembly. The Pope is nothing more than a usurper of Christ's authority. And Martin Luther saw that, and he rejected the Pope for that. He was to say one word. We both know the selling of indulgences have no scriptural support. If common people could read the Bible for themselves, they would understand just how broad the church's interpretations are. That is outrageous. The scriptures are too complex for even the average priest to understand, much less the common man. Indulgences are an established tradition which give comfort to millions of simple Christians. Comfort, Your Grace, I'm not interested in comfort. Comfort is not the issue. So you consider your discomfort more important than the survival of Christianity? I'm interested in the truth. The truth. The Turks are building armies on our eastern borders. We are on the brink of war. 
To the West lies a world of souls who have never heard the name of Christ. That is the truth. Christianity is tearing apart. And just when we need unity most, you create confusion. My goal is not to quarrel with the Pope or the Church, but to defend them with more than mere opinion. The Gospel cannot be denied for the word of man. Amen to that. You know, and, and of course Martin Luther was still a heretic in many ways, but he's right. The gospel, you know, I, I don't know if he actually said that, but you know, it's right. He he's right what he said there. The gospel cannot be denied for what the Pope says or what the Holy Church says. Uh, next timestamp I have is one minute or not one minute, one hour and twenty three sec twenty three minutes and fifty four seconds. So I'll start right there. But they will not stop what we have started. The holy war has just begun. Any man who holds himself up as the master of others, whether he be prince, pope, priest, even professor, must repent. Must repent or be cut down. You call me Professor Karlstedt. No more. From this day forward, I am Brother Andreas. This is a common thing amongst the Baptists. You'll see the Baptists, they have, they have, the Baptists have this Catholic-like mentality of the pastor, the man of God, is, is of a higher standing than the flock. Uh, nowhere is that ever stated in the scripture that he's of a higher, you know, standing or he's like, he's like you know, higher up or anything like that. Uh, he's meant to oversee the flock and protect the flock. You know, we're going to see that. I'm going to show some verses uh, of scripture after I show this. But the Baptists have this mentality that's being condemned in the scene right here. Uh, just like the Catholics, they have this Catholic mentality of the pastor being like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm the master. I'm, you know, you got to submit to the man of God. You'll see that with the Baptists, especially the independent fundamental Baptists. Uh, let's continue. But you know, amen to that. You know, the, uh, no, you're, 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 sorry, your final authority as a Christian is God, not man. Yes. And all of you, likewise, prepare yourselves for the great leveling. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Learn to despise props and pretensions. Amen to that. The crucifix is a graven image. I mean, just plain and simple. Because it has a for, for two reasons. Number for main reason is because it has a statue of Christ on it. You know, uh, Acts seventeen twenty nine forbids making images of the Godhead. And the crucifix is also an idol because Catholics will bow down before it. So it is a graven image. And it's satanic because it basically portrays Christ as if he's still suffering on the cross. As if, you know, because the Catholics, they believe the sacrifice is not done. It's a continual having to crucify Jesus every Sunday. Their work salvation. As Catholics, we've got to continue to suffer for the faith. We have to just endure in, in holiness and works. It's funny, the street preachers believe the same thing. Now they have to endure in, in, in works and everything like that. You know, Again, getting off topic, but you'll see a lot of this mentality that's being condemned here with with a lot of the you know quote unquote <clears throat> yeah, sorry man uh, sorry I, I actually ate something earlier sorry about that but you'll see that a lot of, a lot of it with the Protestant churches I threw up there earlier weird but you'll see that they'll they'll have this mentality of, of this works based salvation and you know, and they'll they'll make graven images. You'll see this this Jed Smock the street preacher. He has this graven image of a crucifix. So yeah, so the crucifix is satanic because it portrays Christ still suffering on the cross. Sorry. <coughs> All right. There we go. Got a cough today. But yeah, the crucifix is wicked. So amen to what he said there. Now let's get into some scripture. I'm just trying to... There we go. Here's a good verse to use against the Roman Catholics. Uh, you use this verse against them, they'll get real mad because they can't handle handle it. First Corinthians chapter four, verse six. These things, brethren, I uh, sorry, and these things. I want to get a physical copy of the King James Bible because I'm not good at reading on a computer. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that none of you be puffed up against one another. Hmm. Not to think of men above which is written. Perfect just refutation of the Roman Catholic traditions. Because they think of men, they put the words of men, the Pope, the priest, above what is written. I mean, you go to your average Catholic Instagram page, very rarely do they ever have, like, scripture quoted. They'll quote from saints, they'll quote from church fathers, they very rarely ever quote from scripture. Uh, they're putting the words of men above the words of God. 
Now, what about this thing of the Pope having preeminence over the church? Third John chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have preeminence among them, receiveth, uh, receiveth us not. Verse 10. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he put doeth, and pray, yeah, parading against us with, with, with malicious words, not content therewith, neither doth he receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, casteth them out of the church. Perfect description of the Pope. He, ha he has preeminence over the brethren. He has he rules over the flock. Uh, first, my notes. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. Whosoever believeth in Christ... Oh, no, first John. Oops. First uh, Peter. Uh, chapter 5. Got my, my, my notes messed up. Uh, first Peter chapter five verse one to three. The elders which are among you, I exhort, whom I also, whom am also, an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Now Brian pointed this out in one of his videos. Uh, we're partakers as Gentiles. We're not, we don't replace Israel, as the Catholic Church says. First uh, Peter chapter five verse two. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, not willingly, not for, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Look at verse three, not being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. If you're an overseer, you're not to lord over the heritage. You're supposed to be an example to them, you know, a good example. You're not supposed to lord over them, like the Pope does. So I just want to show you guys that this was it was a really good film. Oh, and by the way, this was legal. This does follow the Canadian copyright laws because it's for commentary, so it does. It's okay. It is perfectly legal, but really just shows how the true attitude, or the biblical attitude that true Bible believers should have towards Roman Catholicism, saying that what the Pope says does not overthrow Scripture. So, I wanted to show you guys that. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church is not Christianity. It is a pagan cult. It is not the faith that Jesus Christ gave to the world. So, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.